Now, the most famous one is the crow in the sun again from China. But you notice, I am really, you know, put this in perspective. Are those three legs plasma filaments that came off outside the sun that were visible as something outside the, the glowing disk that was off to the left or the right or above or below that they could see? Like, well, how do we represent a glowing filament on the sun that's way outside stretching, you know, halfway to Mercury? We could see it from the Earth. Oh, wait, we'll just put it as a leg. They'll understand that. So that would have been a society of civilization change also. So that's a decline. And what happened at the decline? They started living under Earth in rocks, dolmens. Something happened with the sun where they were running for cover. And we get the wrapping again. You can start to see the interplay of the two currents wrapping in on themselves. They're called field aligned currents. And thank you for joining us here right here on TV every Friday, 2 to 3 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. Organizations and Trilateral Commission, etc., that want to set the world back to serfdom, control everything, implement CME or CBDCs, all predicated on a massive CME wiping out our electrical grids and our internet so that then they can reintroduce and replug in a new system because the old one has failed. That magnetic field line is what you're seeing the aurora follow as the path of least resistance onto our crust. So the magnetic field line is there all the time. We just can't see it because it's not highly enough electrified. So the electric current, like any wire that you see that comes to your house, there's a magnetic field that allows that electron to move. And it's not like a bicycle chain where you're using up the electrons or just moving back and forth. And again, I always make the joke, I'd like to pay my electric bill by the electron because you only ever use one. It's the same one that vibrates back and forth. They're not pushing the electric down the line. They're creating a magnetic field for the electrons to vibrate or jostle in your line. That's truly what it is. So the magnetic field is required. You can't have one without the other. That's the whole thing. Now, whether you or not you see an electric charge coming down the magnetic field line, there's still electric resonance in there. So one holds the other. Now, what you're looking at is that highly electrified orange is following down a magnetic field line. And it's highly electrified where you can actually see that bend going back out to space. And for some reason that they didn't really want to report on this too much, why is that? Because underneath there, I guarantee whatever was under that on the ground level was definitely interfered with electronics. So if you would have had your computer there, if there would have been, I don't know, a, a water treatment plant or something, it would have gone down. And everything would have been glitchy because the wherever it was on that piece of land, and especially if there was minerals under it, if it was on a known like iron ore deposit, or if it was on a known bauxite deposit, that would have run directly through and down into the crust and then spread. A paleozoic effects when you're hitting some electricity into a mineral substrate like quartzite or something, it, that current will run and vibrate through that rock. That's why a lot of stuff during the last couple hundred years, they've noticed that there's far larger power outages in the north and northeast Great Lakes areas of our United States and Canada here in North America because of all the mineral deposits up there. You know, there's a huge amount of iron ore deposit in that area of the world. So again, what does electricity do? It runs through wires. And electricity, whatever kind of wire, if you had an aluminum wire, it doesn't connect or conduct as well as silver does. But iron, you touch something, zzz, you're going to get zapped. So th our planet works very much like everything you're used to as a kid. You know, if you have something where you touched an electrical socket and you put a knife in there and you played with it, bzz, yeah, that, that it wasn't the primary medium to conduct. It wasn't you didn't have a copper knife. You had a regular knife that was either made out of stainless steel. You stick it, bzz, it's still going to run that current down, and you're going to feel it. All metals conduct to some point. Gold has soared past $2,000 an ounce. All-time record high prices, wars in Israel and Ukraine, rate cuts on the table, fueling gold's meteoric rise. Call the proud Americans of the Patriot Gold Group today before it's too late. Mention the ADAPT 2030 channel. You're going to get some great in-class service. Also, Patriot Gold Group has a no fee for life IRA where your IRA or 401k can be in physical gold or silver. 
No fee for life IRA on qualifying rollovers. Give them a call, 888-546-7020. And now on with the video. Back to the, this is what, you know, you're getting into intense Aurora here. And I'm wondering, you know, they say that the International Space Station is rolling around at what, 260 miles above the Earth? Well, some of these are going to be approaching that level. So are you telling me that the International Space Station is rolling through the top of those auroras? Like at what point is this, wait a second, does their electrical system go down? When they're brushing and scraping along the top of that aurora? You know, it goes around the planet 19 times a day. So obviously they're going to roll through this at least once or twice on a solar storm. So think about that for a second. International Space Station, you could literally open the window and reach out and grab a handful of protons out of that thing. That'd be crazy. Now, here's another thing that occurred at the same time, which is not really being explained either. It comes into the climate change debate directly. These same electromagnetic disturbances that are coming through the top of our magnetosphere around the planet, for a better term, they punch through in different places. It doesn't always have to be right at the North Pole. So what's coming off of the sun is able to punch through and destroy ozone, yet they still give no credit for the sun having any driver of our climate whatsoever. So I'm looking at this, now wait a second. You're destroying areas of like 200 miles square of these protons ripping through following magnetic field lines, destroying ozone. Yet somehow there's no effect on our planet in terms of how our clouds can be affected. And then they even have a new, they, there's actually a real term for this called black aurora, where that electrical interference is so intense that it interferes with the color spectrum. And right there, the electric fields in the upper atmosphere prevent the electrons from interacting with the gases because it's so highly electrified. And they call it black aurora. So if you're looking at aurora and you see like really a black line in there or some sort of looks like a gap between the colors, that's one of those. You're looking at an electric current coming through the aurora. And it is so intense that it actually blocks the field and then they reconnect themselves and you might get some wafty something that makes no sense like an orange one. As these two superconductive magnetic field lines connect with each other at different points on our planet. That's what's really bizarre about this, the black regions here. There's names for this. It's a cataloged. Now follow. Now follow the. Just follow the magnetic currents. Now change that black aurora in in the what we just looked at right here. That schematic of the electrons ripping down on their field lines. Just put insert those into the orange above the planet. It connects right to the clouds and the cloud cells all the way up from the red sprites, the blue jets, the halos at the top of the atmosphere, about 100 miles up. That's a direct connection. That's why they call it the Earth's electric circuit, the global electric circuit. Like they're feeding you all of this. Sun's going to destroy everything and rip apart our electric grid and the Internet's not going to work. But they never talk about how it works on the clouds, too. And then it disturbs that. And the lower you get in the atmosphere, the higher the heating is. And the higher the heating, you get disturbances where things are bending around. And that's why a lot of these like record floods are in play right now. Because if you electrify an area, you're either going to slow something down or you're going to create more rainfall or you're going to dry it out where that thing is going to push around. And they keep talking about all these wobbly jet streams and things are in the wrong place and the cloud cells are collapsing on each other and the jet streams are going really low and the polar vortex and this and that is blamed on you driving your car. It, actually, it's this interplaying with an electric field off the sun down onto the planet's crust through the clouds and through the jet streams. And once he's locked in place, and there's more moisture from the uh, Hunga Tonga eruption. So the hydrological cycle, you got to think about driving through fog in a car. Like imagine 10% more moisture in the atmosphere. It's actually 14, excuse me. But that, that's going to be heavy and dragging. It'll slow down somewhere. And then the rest of the system needs to bend around it or get caught up in a, like a rugby scrum right there and just keep rolling in on itself. Well, those rolling in on themselves, points are the record floods, years worth of rain in a day. The entire system can be explained electrically. And here we go. Record earliest snowfall in 40 years. Now, this is all happening during this coronal hole with the same orange aurora, with all of these events and all of these massive record anomalies occur during the same days. 
There's a connection for sure. But once you understand that global warming hype and global tax doesn't exist any longer. There's no more control of that narrative. It completely disintegrates and it never comes back. So to like Fukuoka, if you're familiar with the Fukuoka farming method, this guy was intense. He's like outside the box thinker. So when he was going to go throw seeds out in the field, he would wait until there's an intense electrical storm, like pounding rain, sideways rain. And he's standing up there laughing, throwing his seeds out. And he got some of the highest yields ever because there's an electrical interplay into the seeds and that magnetic and electrical change in the field state around the air when he was throwing those up had an effect on the germination rate and the uh, root depth and the actual amount of uh, plant material cellulose. And there's a well-established science on electrifying seeds, either with just strictly electricity or put passing them past neodymium magnets to get a higher yield. But he understood that using the current coming through during an electrical storm in the air around us, throwing the seeds up for 10 or 12 seconds and letting them come back down, he electrified those seeds enough to change them. But well, now there's a better uh, like timing structure on it. Between 30 seconds and 60 seconds, we'll hit that highest point to give you the highest yield off of regular seed, and we don't need as much chemical then. But of course, that information, not a lot of talk about that either because it interferes with big ag. You can actually get much higher yields with less pesticide, less herbicide, and uh, go back to heirloom varieties to kick anything GMO to the curb by magnetizing or electrifying your seeds. Yeah, they don't want that out there. Early blizzards destroying the Alps. I mean, they were talking about six feet of snow, rare early season snowfall warnings, Portugal, all during the solar storm with those same hugely electrified currents coming down on the surface of our planet. And then we got, uh, this was just a couple days after that. You got record flooding in, where was this, in Mecca. Although they've had some floods over the last few years. Mecca is definitely a point to look at on the map that's continuously getting floods again and again and again and again for like the last three or four years. This is an absolute area that is going to re-green in the desert. If I was a betting guy and I wanted to set up a new orchard facility and get that land in the desert for like a dollar an acre, my money's out here because I know it's going to get greener. Just the rainfall patterns have shifted. It's flooding and raining every single year, real heavy there now. And then tons of dead fish wash up on the coast of northern Japan. Well, if you know about Aurora, they run in more on the northerly latitudes. So if you're way in north Japan and you're getting up near Russia and the Kamchatka Peninsula, it's going to be much more highly electrified up there. So I'm just wondering if this had something to do with a a fissure in the ocean and somehow gases came out and all these fish died because of that same coronal hole stream and electrified plasma ripping down onto the planet and the magnet on the magnetic field lines. So all the, these anomalies are hard to explain, all occurring in the same time here. And then Russia breaks a 150 year snowfall record the same day as these coronal hole passes with those massive earthquakes. All this happens in the same days. That's the whole thing I'm trying to present here. And then we got a mud flood, a literal mud flood in Tanzania on December 3rd, which was the tail end of that. But the storms have had to have been in effect coming in to drop that amount of rain through December 1st and 2nd, which would have been during the coronal hole stream and the electrified atmosphere that we had. And then we're already at 68.8 degrees Fahrenheit below zero in Russia. You don't get those temperatures until February. So what happened during this time to set off these Incredible amounts of events is more the question. And the relationship between electricity, electromagnetism, plasma, and our Earth, and how it affects our terrestrial systems. And then we have the locusts swarming across Mexico right now. Biblical. You got to watch these videos. I'm shocked. They literally, they don't quite block out the sun, but there's some areas where it definitely gets dusky as it comes over. It really gets much darker when these waves and uh, of these locusts are coming by and you wonder hmm are they on a pattern as well were they triggered by the electrical influences from the sun on these same days and whoosh all of a sudden these locusts start to swarm there's some kind of internal mechanism that the sun turned them on to amplify and swarm right now and take off this just started at the same time those electric those magnetic field lines turned on 
something happened with the locust too. There's, it, you know, our sun affects everything. It affects your emotions. It affects people's physiology. There's more strokes and heart attacks during, you know, big solar storms. It affects earthquakes, volcanoes. Sure, it's going to affect insect life too. And a lot of things that echolocate and use magnetism get lost, you know, things that are like whales and turtles and bees, butterflies. They end up in the wrong place, birds. They're using magnetic field lines, but during this time, perhaps they get off course and when it resets, they're like, whoa, we're lost. That magnetic field line doesn't match up. Gertrude, we were supposed to head north. Like you gave us the wrong directions. Get out the map. But their map is the magnetic field line. And they're lost in space, literally, as it re re like reforms itself back to the normal state after it's highly electrified, those magnetic field lines are moving and twisting and like bouncing into different places. But once that electrification, over electrification into the system ceases, everything just reverts back into the way it was. But something could be 100 miles off course by then. And, and when the electromagnetic field or magnetic field lines on the planet reorient themselves back to what we consider normal, they're stuck over there. Going, wait a second, now we're heading west. This and they just keep they keep following the same line. And boom, they run into something, and then we find this huge man, animal die-off. There's something interplaying here. And I wanted to go back to ancient history for the last seconds while we talk, last minutes. Now the coronal hole, and I really want you to take a look at the coronal hole. Some people said it looked like the don't tread on me snake, which is interesting. I never saw that, but you know, use your imagination. It's like looking at clouds. What is it? But through history, we have many a representation of the same coronal hole being visible from Earth that has some massive effect on the society at the time. Now, for me, I don't know if the legs were actually plasma filaments that were coming off the sun that were visible, but how would you represent a moving plasma filament coming off the sun and put it into a 3D or a 2D object on a flat surface? Maybe they drew legs. Maybe the crow took up more than a quarter of the sun and it was visible from Earth. Now, this is the 6th and 7th century, but these things were referenced as dynasty destroyers, for a better term, far back. This is just what they'd found in the tombs. So a lot of times this was passed down and passed down and passed down. The legends and the stories and the myths stayed intact as a lesson for the next generation when you see this. There's a huge problem. Get ready for society. Now, the most famous one is the crow in the sun again from China. But you notice, I am really, you know, put this in perspective. Are those three legs plasma filaments that came off outside the sun that were visible as something outside the, the glowing disc that was off to the left or the right or above or below that they could see? And they're like, well, how do we represent a glowing filament on the sun that's way outside stretching, you know, halfway to Mercury? We could see it from the Earth. Oh, wait, we'll just put it as a leg. They'll understand that. So what is this? How far do we need to go back? Uh, this one's called the San Wu. Oh, uh, yeah, San Zhu Wu. And this is a mural from 220 BCE, about 2,050 years ago, 2,250 years ago. But I want you to reference that. Even though this mural was found at that time, the whole thing moves around to 2170 BC is really the event that took place that was still referenced and still revered enough to pass it down, even though some 2000 years earlier, the event took place. Now there's a Chinese legend. Now if we do 2170 plus the 2023 where we sit now, where something happened where all of the crows in the sun appeared in the sky in the same day and started to burn the surface of the planet. And then there was a mythical archer called Ho Yi, who using his bow shot down each sun and eventually knocked most of them down and left only one, the sun we have today. And he extinguished all the other suns that were burning the surface of the planet. So for me, obviously this is a representation of some massive, I mean, incredible coronal mass ejection that hit our planet. And it was referenced, you know, about 4,000, say 200 years ago. So if we look back in time at the GISP ice core data set and we go back that far to about 4,100, 4,200 years ago, we see a significant drop in temperature. You're going from time in the past is the left of the chart 
and the closer you go to the right of the chart is where we get to our time and you'll see the red line where we are. So there's a massive drop off in temperature relatively quickly, which would have destroyed agriculture. So what happened? In each one of these significantly steep drop offs, you're gonna see a shift. So we call this the Neolithic decline and it was between 5,000 and 6,000 years ago. They're very unsure. They don't have enough in prehistory to put it together. The Chalcadians maybe. So they'll, they'll, they'll date it 5,000 to 6,000 years ago, the Neolithic decline. And I'll bring you back to the temperature side. I put the orange line there. That is a very significant drop off of two degrees Celsius, which would ruin agriculture. And that happened in less than 100 years. So that would have been a society of civilization change also. So that's a decline. And what happened at the decline? They started living under earth in rocks, dolmens. Something happened with the sun where they were running for cover. And you're thinking, hmm, what else did they do? Oh, at the same time, they started building these dolmens, running from the plasma discharge off of our sun. It was probably visibly, you probably had eight hours to three days to know the next one was coming. And of course you would get in, this is a bomb shell. This is a plasma shelter. We see these all over the earth. And this one could be a community plasma shelter. And they're saying, well, they use guys with ropes and like sticks. Th those are multi-ton boulders. We can barely move those with our cranes. How do they get them in place? They levitated them somehow using acoustic levitation at a canceling frequency of that substrate and they figured it out and they were able to lift it. There's no other possible way. And now we're seeing electrified ropes in our skies. Now this was in March of 2023. And you can see what it looks like, a rope in the sky. This is the plasma they were referencing. The more intense, obviously, you start to see, and then you get these twisting field lines. And this is when I talk about plasma filaments with an electrical current in them. You get the opposite positive negative polarities wrapping in on themselves, and then the magnetic fields couple and become one. And the further down you go, now you have a single magnetic field with a single double strand of uh, conventional current flow for a better term, like going down your wire. So this is what's coming down and you can clearly see the inner looping of these two fields right there. The one on the left was further back about three years ago. The one on the right uh, was at the latest solar storm we just had here a couple of weeks ago. The skies are becoming more electrified. You don't get these auroral ropes without, that's a current coming down, literally like an electric line coming to your house. That's an electric line going down to our planet's surface. And we get the wrapping again. You can start to see the interplay of the two currents wrapping in on themselves. They're called field line currents. And somehow the same, this was prior, this is in February of 2022, big solar storm when Elon's trying to launch all the satellites. Boom, they knocked them out like they were insects in the sky. All those came down. Yet we're supposed to believe that there's no effect on our climate from the same system that's knocking out satellites, taking down power grids, electrifying the Earth's surface, causing earthquakes. But nope, our clouds are not affected. It's just you. It's not you. It's not CO2. It's the sun for sure. And once we start to know that, and please share this information, we can start to kick this narrative back to the curb and into the dustbin of history where it belongs. So I thank you for watching. Hope you got something out of this. See you next time. Bye for now.